Great. Thank you so much, Yulia, for introduction. Indeed, I think this was the first time that both of our faces were on a screen. Uh, I would like to say thank you to, to Yulia, um, who's uh, we co-host um, the panels. And at the same time, I would like to say thank you to Dima, our technology guy, who's trying to get all of you uh, logged in and making sure that everything is going smoothly. Um, so indeed, talking about the change and talking about the objective of this panel and, and the transformation that is happening, um, I believe that it was a very right time to, to discuss what change happened in this 100 days and how we can support the new norm. So Agnes Consultancy um, is specializing in government reforms and complex transformational programs. We are utilizing a variety of organizational, but at the same time, social psychology methodologies. We are delivering change that not only involves government restructuring, intergovernmental strategies, a large business program execution, but at the same time, change in social behavior and public perception. The way how society perceives change is almost as important as the change itself. And we are witnessing that on a daily news. Therefore, during these 100 days of pandemic, we have witnessed a tremendous gap in the change managers' skills and resilience to change in organizational and governmental structures. We are witnessing this uh, significant spiral effect, the lack of resilience brings in societal structure levels. The levels have been analyzed at our individual level, managerial level within the companies, small and medium businesses, large global organizations, intergovernmental, um, in-country governments, and even bigger than that, the bigger geopolitical blocks. When we, when we analyze these societal structure levels in more detail, we can easily witness how resilience to change decreased with every level up. So the bigger the structure, the bigger the block, the smaller is the resilience. Looking at the individual level, we can all agree that during these 100 days of pandemics, the way we work, the way we socialize, and the way we talk uh, with our doctors, with our bosses, even with our friends, have changed significantly. And even the change was tremendous, we managed to adapt it quite quickly on individual level. The first few weeks, of course, of uncertainty were extremely stressful. However, we witness a very standard social psychological reaction of togetherness and collective tribal response. Communities all over the world are coming together to help each other and those in need. And I see that as a very positive, of course, forced lesson, but positive for individual and collective consciousness. Going up the spiral, looking from the small and medium business perspective, the impact of COVID-19 was tremendous. Many businesses had to close or let go of their employees, and those few that survived were those who were able to quickly and promptly transform their business models to adjust to the current circumstances. And that relates back to the talk that Henry gave in terms of ability to see those opportunities that are around the corner. 100 Days of Pandemic was a perfect stress test to review organizational target operating models, human capital management methodologies, and business strategy validity. And even though some businesses were able to successfully adjust, the change was complicated, stressful, and financially draining. Going up the societal structure spiral, we are witnessing the decrease in ability to adjust. And of the spiral that is analyzing in-country governments, can we see delay in the policies, recommendations, regulations, or even lack or none crisis management skills? That highlights the need for governing model adjustment with less hierarchical system and more agile decision-making model. From analyzing domestic changes required, we have highlighted sectors of monetary economics and finance energy and electricity, as well as health and education. A need for financial conduct establishment and regulatory changes to fight corruption, fraud, and money laundering within financial sectors. And these are the areas that faced or led to the highest risk during the pandemic. Therefore, we are witnessing a significant need for large change and crisis management experience. But most importantly, 
social perception management methodologies within governing bodies. According to the latest research in the field of social political psychology, lack of social acceptance and parliamentary outcomes will lead to an increased negative public reaction and social political instability and potential violence, which are already witnessing on a daily news. Transparency and consistent communication on the progress of political commitments will lead to an increased public involvement and interest, therefore may potentially lead to positive social bias if public expectations are met. And even so, one country will achieve great success in adjusting to change as big as COVID-19, its decision-making power is still dependent on the bigger geopolitical bloc. In country sovereignty or an autonomous decision-making power over individual country priorities, in country sovereignty or an autonomous decision making power over individual country priorities should always be prioritized. In country sovereignty must be preserved under international law, assuring that all government or non government entities must adhere to supreme power of individual countries' authority to make self governing decisions. So, in order to end my talk, I would like to wish us all that we will not go back to the familiar past, but we will be brave enough to mold and shape the new norm as we believe to be the right way.